Last week, we learned normal distribution, t distribution, standardization, z score, t score, how to deal with a small sample, sample mean, standard errors. We are ready to talk about hypothesis testing. What is hypothesis testing? Our interest is a population, but in most cases, we only have a sample. So we start from sample and make some analysis on the sample, and then make some inference based on the sample. So we can generate some inference for the whole population. The issue here is that since we do not have the whole population, we may make some mistakes to generate some inference from the sample to the whole population. Statistics have the hypothesis testing, which creates some theory hypothesis. So we can test the theory and hypothesis, whether it's statistical correct, reliable or not. We are also interested in measure how significant our findings and our results. And uh, furthermore, so we want to know what's the possible errors in the findings. So first thing we need to do is to set a hypothesis. So here, we need to set two hypotheses. The first one we call it non-hypothesis. Another one is alternative hypothesis. The non-hypothesis is always conservative and states that the, there's no effect, no difference, no findings. For example, we may say the sample mean is not different from the population mean. If we think there's no finding, the non-hypothesis will say that there's no results, no finding. We have another hypothesis, we call it alternative hypothesis. It's an opposite of the non-hypothesis. And in the previous example, so we will say, here we will say the sample mean is different from the population mean or we will say the sample mean is larger than the population mean, or the sample mean is smaller than the population mean. And in most of cases, we will denote the non-hypothesis is H0, alternative hypothesis H1. So here, let's take a look at one hypothesis which we use to compare the means of the sample and the, the mean of population. So we use X bar to show the sample mean and use mu to represent the population mean. We want to test whether the sample mean is significantly different from the population mean. And in our case, we already know the sample mean and we know the population mean. We will say the non-hypothesis. We will say there's no effect, which means we will say there's no difference between the population mean and the sample mean. And then we also need to set the alternative hypothesis. There are two alternative hypotheses. The first one we call it two-tailed alternative hypothesis. For this one, here we will say the population mean is different from the sample mean. And um, sometimes we want to be more precise. So we will say the population mean is less than the sample mean or the population mean is larger than the sample mean. The two type of hypothesis is almost the same, and we can use any of them. But the one tiled alternative hypothesis is more precise. We can either reject or not reject 
the non-hypothesis to support the alternative hypothesis. Some books may mention that we can accept or reject the non-hypothesis. But technically, we do not say we accept the non-hypothesis. Since even though there's no significant difference between the sample mean and the population mean, but the sample and is probably close to the population mean. But we cannot say the sample mean is the population mean. So we cannot say we accept, we just say we not reject the non hypothesis. We would not reject the non hypothesis. If the difference in the mean is like to be due to the chance or randomness sampling error, but we would reject the null hypothesis if the difference in the means is significantly different and due, unlikely due to the chance or randomness sampling error. Before we doing any testing, we two sets a level of significance, which is a probability. The value of this probability is really small. If the chance to have a difference in the means is smaller than the level of the significance, it's very unlikely to have the difference due to the chance. So under this situation, we will reject the non-hypothesis. Otherwise, we would not reject the null hypothesis. In the slides, we talk about the level of significance. So we use it and they tell us reject or not reject the null hypothesis. And here, I will introduce a p-value. So what is p-value? And for the p-value, it's indicates the probability of having a particular difference in means by chance. We can calculate this probability through this data sets. So it indicates a probability that you can calculate after or based on the starting. So let us say the probability of having a particular difference in means is less than the level of significance. So you reject the long hypothesis. In another words, if the p-value is less than the choose of significance level, you reject the long hypothesis. So you are not reject the samples, give you a reasonable evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. So in most of cases, people will refer the p-value less than five, less than point zero five, as the statistically significant, and they refer the p-value less than point zero zero five as statistically highly significant. What's going on if we reject or not reject the hypothesis? So there are two risks. Let's take a look at this table. So here, if the truth is the non-hypothesis is truth, and uh, but we incorrectly reject non-hypothesis, so the type one error happened, and if the non-hypothesis is true and we not reject the hypothesis, so we make the correct decision. Let's take a look at another scenario. So if the non-hypothesis is false, and we make a correct decision, so we reject the non-hypothesis. So there's no risk. Otherwise, uh, if the non-hypothesis is false, and we not reject the null hypothesis. So it's triggered the type two error. 
the type 2 arrow, we call it false negative. Type 1 arrow, we call it false positive. So here, I introduce the two type of arrows. Those two type of arrows, they are opposite with each other. If we try to decrease one type of arrow, at the same time, we increase another type of arrow. So there are some try, there are kind of trade off between those two arrows. Let's take a look at why this is happening. So as I mentioned before, if your p value is less than the significance level, you will reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So here, if we set the level significance is really small, like the 0 0.001. So it's less likely that our p-value is less than the significance level. So we will not reject the non-hypothesis. OK? So if the non-hypothesis is true and it's fine, so we make the good decision. And so Otherwise, if the null hypothesis is false, so it's increased the type 2 error, but we decrease the type 1 error. Okay? And on the other hand, let's think about if we make the level of significance a little bit larger, like the 0 0.05, so which means the p value is more more likely to less than the chosen significance level, and then you reject the null hypothesis. And so, if the null hypothesis is choose, so it's increase the probability of the type one error because you will reject the hypothesis. But if the hypothesis is false, and it's decrease the type 2 arrow. So the smaller the level of significance, the less likely we are to make a type 1 arrow and the more likely to make a type 2 arrow. So here let's take a look at this example. We use this example in the last week. So let's review this example. We have a company ABC. They believe that the average number of the monthly product return of the product X should be equal to 20. However, for the last six weeks, for the last six months, the average number of monthly product return was 25 with the standard deviation of 5. Our previous question is try to check how unusual is the number of the product average returns of the 25 in the last six months. So here we assume the complaint, the estimate of the having 20 product return cash return each month are average is correct. So in the previous question, so we use uh, because the sample size is less than 30, so we use a T distribution, we use a t-score here. So first uh, we get the standard error, use the standard deviation. We have here is phi divided by the number of the observation. So we got the standard deviation, sample standard deviation. And then we calculate the t-score and we get a t-score is equal to the the sample mean minus the population mean and divided by the sample standard deviation. So we got the t-score. And because the sample size is 6, so we have the degree of freedom equal to 5. Based on the statistical calculator, we find that we have around the 97% of value lies below the 2.45 in the distribution with a five degree of freedom and the three percentage lies above the 2.45, okay? 
So this is our previous example. Let's take a look at the current question. In this question, so it says, ask, is the average is the sample average of the monthly project return of the 25 significantly higher than the assumed average of the 20 monthly project returns? Which means, we try to see whether the sample mean equal to the population mean. Let's take a look at it. First, we say, say the long hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So for the long hypothesis, we say the population mean is no difference. There's no difference between the population mean and the, the sample mean. And for the alternative hypothesis, because uh, based on the content, we know the sample mean is 25, so it's larger than the population mean. So here, we use the one-tailed alternative hypothesis. We say the population mean, we try to check the population mean, whether it's, it is less than the sample mean. So because based on the previous question, we already calculate the, we find that the probability of getting the six month sample with average month return of 25 or higher is equal to 0 0.05. Therefore, the p value is equal to 0 0.05. So if we set here the level of significance is 0 0.05 and the p value is equal to the 0 0.03 which is smaller than the significance level we set. So we will reject the non-hypothesis. So we assume that the sample average of the 25 is significantly higher than the assumed average of population. But if we set the level of significance a little bit lower, so it's, we say the 0 0.01, then the p-value is not smaller than the 0 0.01. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So we cannot assume that's a lot. So we cannot assume the average of 25 is higher than the assumed average of 20.